If sailors' tales to sailors' tunes, storm and adventure, heat and cold, if schooners' islands, and maroons and buccaneers and buried gold, and all the old romance retold exactly in the ancient way can please as me they pleased of old, the wiser youngsters of today. So be it. Ha-ha! And fall off! This island of Portobello is my home. Most people would say it's not a fit place to bring up a young English lad of gentle breeding, but if you'll take a boy's word for it, Portobello is the most wonderful place in the whole world. Mind my horse. I'm looking for Enrico Pascali, the Spanish harness maker. Up the back stairs, sir. What a rude man. Takes all kinds of people to make a world, Jim. <laughs> Tell Long John, that's the best Indian tobacco there is. Thank you, I will. Some poppers made big Eric his groom. Not me, he ain't. He's a beauty. Here, lad. Time for size. <laughs> Would you come and see him and unhand my horse, please? And take your filthy hands from my clothes. <laughs> you play act the pop to perfection, Jim. So the little pirate scum does. I'll switch with an inch of your life. Hey, hey, hey. Take your hands off of your swine. <laughs> <laughs> There's no cool in your temper. <laughs> Afternoon, he did. Yeah, put his head in a barrel of water. I did. Bubbles? I thought he'd never stop bubbling. <laughs> he did, Long John. When I came out of the tobacconist. Here, have you been in sight in trouble? Oh no, Long John. The man tried to horsewhip me. Oh, he did, did he? Aye. He looked like a drowned rat when I'd finished with him. Ha <laughs> Excellent. Excellent indeed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 should find 
the men you describe in this tavern, my lord. For your sake, I hope so, Sergeant. So far, I have a poor opinion indeed of your efficiency. That's him, the fop. There's the ruffian, Sergeant. Arrest that man. Pinker. And I'll thank you to keep your voice down or I'll tear your tongue out. Don't you know when you're addressing a lady? Uh, uh, the wind must have blown out the candles, purity love. Now look here. If you leave this in right away, we'll stop bringing charges against you for ill behavior. Against me? You woman ought to be run out of this town for encouraging such ruffians. This tavern is nothing but a spawning ground for criminals. A den of violence. I'll give you just two seconds to get out of here. Billy, I'll tend to this fine feather up start myself. Now out! No! I'll see the governor. I'll have this den of iniquity wiped out. I said get out. Come on, fellow. Come on out here. Seriously, stop all right. <laughs> now mind, Elizabeth, you must show Lord Ellington that your manners are just as nice as those of any child schooled in England. He's never been to Government House before. If he's important, why hasn't he been here before? He's an absentee landlord. He left here before your father was sent here as Governor. He didn't look a very great personage when he came to see Papa this morning. He was all wet and muddy and a terrible temper. Elizabeth! I am surprised at you. Poor Lord Ellington had been the victim of a brutal assault. It's a disgrace that a gentleman who bears letters from Mr. Pitt and is, they say, a friend of the King himself, should be so insulted in Portobello. Well, I didn't think him very gentlemanly, Mother. He was shouting. He had every reason to shout. You told me gentle people never lost their tempers, so he can't be very gentlemanlike. Elizabeth! Now, darling, do keep yourself tidy. And don't say anything to disgrace your father and myself at dinner. Yes, Mother. Fix Miss Elizabeth's hair for her, Melinda. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. Come in, my dear. That'll be all, Captain. Is there something wrong, Henry? I fear we're facing unsettled times, my dear. There are strong rumors which my latest reports confirm. The Spaniards are planning a new attack in the Caribbean. We're only half prepared. Who's to know where they're going to strike? Maybe you're being unduly alarmed, Henry. Oh, please try to forget your worries for just one night. Lord Ellington will be here at any moment. I wish he'd go back to his plantation. I... <laughs> oh, my dear, he has so much influence, I am duty-bound to help him. I just can't stand the man. Neither I... can Elizabeth. She's very much your daughter, Henry. There you are, Strong. You indeed administer this island in a shoddy way. You will explain that, Lord Ellington. My apologies for my appearance, madam. In the past 24 hours, I have twice been subjected to indignities by the ruffians who have no fear for law and order. Since arriving here from my plantation, I have seen nothing but complete disregard for authority. I am sorry for your condition. But with due regard to the population of this port, I cannot agree with you. Henry... Are you implying that I am lying? I'm implying nothing of the sort. Perhaps you have a pension for catastrophes. I have been twice assaulted. And I would like to remind you, Governor Strong, that unless I get satisfaction for the humiliation I have suffered in your territory, there will be letters sent to England. And a new governor sent to Portobello. What would you have me do? Surround you by armed guards at all times? I suggest unless you have no regard for your position, that you immediately close the cask and anchor in. But, uh, since this appears to be the hangout and breeding ground of these ruffians, I demand that it be closed immediately to protect the lawful, honest citizens. But, Miss Pinker, is a... Very well. My letters will be sent in the morning. 
The cask and anchor will be closed. You'll take a troop of men and post my orders. Should there be any violence or a slip, you'll no longer be a sergeant. Yes, Your Excellency. Spoken like a true governor. Again, my apologies for my appearance. I will return dressed properly for dinner. Miss Pinker, but I'm acting under orders. Under orders, indeed. Well, mark my word. Long John Silver's having counsel with Governor Strong this very moment. And you and your soldiers will be obliged to cart every last thing inside when he returns. It'll be a pleasure, madam. The very idea. Honest innkeepers being tried like criminals. She's right. Well, it's not my doing, ma'am. Not your doing. Sure, you haven't the authority of an aunt. Closing up my tavern, you haven't enough sense to close up your own mouth. Board up the doors. Cutthroats. Aye. What kind of talk is this? Do we have to sink to their level? You're a gentleman and I'm a lady. Let's never forget that. I'm a security. Belay the hammers! Here's Long John now! Off with the boards! Come on, give me a hand with these things. We'll have to await orders, ma'am. You're taking orders from me now, right, Long John? <laughs> our uh, uh, purity, uh, 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 there's been a, a speck of trouble. I either have, but it's all over. Take down those boards, I said. Uh, no, I, 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 I've had ill luck with the governor. You mean? <coughs> or he, he's knuckling under to that Lord Ellington. But what's to become of my tavern? Well, he, he, he won't listen to reason, not even from his old friend Long John. Why, he... Oh. Oh, now, now. I'm sorry, Purity. Sorry, he says. Sorry, indeed. If it weren't for you and the ruffian manners of you and your crew, this would never have happened. I hate the day I ever set eyes on you. You've been nothing to me but trouble. <sighs> oh, now, 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 stay your tears. You'll only swell up your eyes. What's to become of me, Long John? What's to become of any respectable, peace-loving woman if they have no rights in Port to bellow? Where shall I go? Well... <laughs> You can make your home aboard the Faithful for a while. You're inviting me aboard your ship, Long John? Well, well uh, only temporary, like. Uh, oh, Long John. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, get Patch and the rest of the crew to take Miss Purity's belongings aboard my ship. Aye, Long John. Long John, it's a touch of home. And bright and cozy it'd be, too. You haven't spoken in almost a day. Are you ill? I, uh, I think I'd better be stepping ashore. In your shirt sleeve like a common sailor. I've been going ashore for 30 years in my shirt sleeve. Not while I be about. Now you'll put your coat on. Here. Get into it. That's it. <clears throat> And you'll notice the buttons be polished and the sleeve mended. Aye. something soon, mark my words, we'll be knitting doilies. We've no choice. Jim, lad, we got Miss Purity into this trouble and we got to get her out of it. Here, lad, would you like to step ashore? I can, sir. Then up anchor. We're on our way. <laughs> It'll work out all right, matey. 
You be a man now, same as I, Jim, so I can confide in you about the fears I have in my mind. You're afraid of something, Long John? Ah, the faithful is fast becoming a hen house. Oh, Miss Purity. Ah, what's going on aboard now be as disastrous as the time I stove in her bottom off the cape. You're worrying too much, Long John. All she's doing is fixing it up. Here, lad, uh, you be 12 year old now, ain't he? That's right. Ah, that's still a bit young to know the treachery of women. <laughs> you there. <laughs> Move on, away from here. Here, are you ordering me off the street? On your way. What cargo have you here that a man and a boy could arm? Coffee beans from the plantations of Lord Ellington. And I've orders to permit no lawyers. Ah, Lord Ellington. Ah, come on, lad. Lord Ellington. <laughs> he be the cause of all my misery. <laughs> I wish I'd never seen him that day he was looking for the Spanish harness maker. Here, wait a minute. Why should an English lord be going to a Spanish harness maker? It piques my curiosity, it does. With things being touch and go like between us and the Spaniard. Here. You go back aboard now and send Patch and Fenner here. Sharp now. Hey. How's my faithful overseer past his time? You're a snake. A true snake wouldn't feed you. Aren't you hungry looking after this vast plantation? Why bother to feed me at all? Why don't you kill me and have done with it? You may yet be useful to me. And I'll thank you to call me my lord in future. You'll be now lord to me. What have you done with Lord Ellington? I fear your good master lies abed in London with a broken skull. If in truth he isn't dead. You dirty renegade imposter! For that you don't eat. Don Alfonso, bring some wine and glasses. <laughs> so the poor captured plantation worker has prides. You will not be so loyal, perhaps, when Don Alfonso's soldiers have taken Portobello and it is once again a Spanish possession. Your plan will fail. Tonight, the load of coffee casks that go to town will each bear within it a Spanish soldier. They will arm in the warehouse, open the city to the troops in the woods, and take Portobello before dawn. Now you pig, drink to the fall of Portobello. I will not see an honest man be forced to drink to his country's downfall. We do not pay you for brutality, fellows, only for treason. I drink to the death of traitors. I'm sorry, Senor Bowen, but you must be retied and gagged. I must hide my men. And load the wagons. Our rendezvous will be at midnight. Don't forget my gold. Don't give up hope. All 
will be well. Are you sure you don't know where Long John and that scurvy crew disappeared to? Not the slightest idea. Make a home for a man and he walks away from it. I wonder what trouble he'll get into this night. this plan. All swell. Here is your blood money. I go no further with you. As you wish. You would be of no use to me. Your very voice is hoarse with fear. I only hope that your men be as wise as you when they're ambushed by the governor's soldiers. <laughs> this be Don Alfonso, we surrender. Your prisoner, Your Excellency. Here is Pasquale, the harness maker. Here is the Fergus Lord Ellington. You told them of me. You betrayed me. As ungallant in defeat as you were in near victory. The sight of you sickens me. We will not be sickened any longer. I order these men to be executed. Spare me. I beseech you. I don't want to die. Here, we'll have none of your sniveling here. You can't shoot a man without his clothes. Oh. You mean you was taken while you was in bed? A ruffian ambushed me in the woods. Took my clothes, my horse, my hair, my gold. I demand to know who assaulted me. Take them away. You, sir, will be imprisoned. You have indeed covered yourself with glory this night, Long John. Ah, it was nothing, Your Excellency. Uh, why, it is a favor I owe this island for all its kindness to me in the past. What a fool I was to be taken in by that traitorous fop. If it hadn't been for you, we'd have been taken and sacked. Uh, well, sometimes it takes a man of my ilk uh, uh, to, to catch them kind of rattlesnakes. Is there some way in my power in which I can reward your gallantry? Well, now, uh, since you ask, uh, would you let Miss Purity open up her cask and anchor again? By gad, to think that I should deprive her of a home to suit a spy. Consider it done. Oh, thank you, Excellency. Uh, and now I'll be on my way to tell her the good news. <laughs> oh, uh, Silver, Heart. is there some other reward, uh, something more substantial you'd rather have? Uh, no. If you'd been aboard the faithful with me the last week, you'd have found out, as I did, to be more important things to a man than the jingle of gold. <laughs> Stripper clean, lad. Tear and rip, I see. Come aboard! <laughs> Open for business, I see. 
The smell of celebrating already being wafted on the breeze. Oh, here, did you get hurt? No. The traitor's boots have given me a blister. They're three sizes too big. Did you get the loot? Aye, nice work. <laughs> it would have warmed your heart to see him standing there in North but his underwear, praying for his life. <laughs> for a traitor, for a traitor, he fought like a man. I had quite a time, I did, getting his clothes off in the woods and giving him a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> in we go.